This is AnimaApp.com and in this video we're gonna go through some incredible no-code website builders just like this one. And to explain a little bit about what these tools actually do and what even is the point of this, we're gonna go through some of the most popular ones, some of the newest ones, and also my personal favorite. So stick around to the end to see which one I use. Now let's get into it. The first one, as I said, AnimaApp.com is a website builder that uses commonly used tools like Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD to take that file and actually publish it to the internet so you're designing directly on figma or on adobe xd and it's turning it directly into code now there's a lot of different competitors to anima but this is the most prominent one in the market and this is one that you can get started with today now i'm gonna have links to absolutely everything in the description some of them might be affiliated so it will help me a little bit but with that being said let's check out anima so as i said anima has a really great point you don't need to learn new tools new new softwares to get your site to go live all you need to do is learn figma or sketch or adobe xd and use a plugin to take that design and then ship it to the internet. Second up here is gonna be Framer.com. Now Framer is seen as the Webflow killer. It's seen as the main competitor for Webflow. And their main selling proposition here is that you can design websites extremely fast. And they're also saying that you can get rid of Figma and Webflow when you're creating websites. So essentially you have one software they use to design and also to publish. So the benefit of this is obviously if I only need to learn one software, well then that's incredible, right? I don't need to learn two. It's much more streamlined. All I need to do is design and build in the exact same thing. And it can also produce really great code. Now, another thing to note here is that it does also work with Figma. So if you already have a Figma design, you can then publish it over to Framer and then you can then publish the design from Framer, right? Now there's a lot of benefits from using Framer, like they're super fast, very responsive. There's integrations. They also have CMS, which is quite advanced for a tool like this. But one thing to, to note here is, at least personally, when I look at all the examples from Framer, like if we click on the gallery here and we actually look at what designs have been made, like this one, for example, let's click on a random one. We see that although the design is nice, it's it's well laid out, the, the colors look great. It's a very simple site. And these limitations or the limitation within Framer is going to be the complexity of the designs that you can actually develop and the complexity of the animations Like you can have a very simple animation like this that goes one, two, three, but anything above that, anything very, very, very complex like you can do with other tools, you won't be able to do. So keep that in mind, but it is a great tool to get started to build a website fast and, and send it out. Next one is going to be super.so. Now I've been a fan of super since the very, very beginning, just because of how often I use Notion. I'm always using Notion either for YouTube, for client work, for absolutely everything. And so the idea is that you have a notion with all of the information that you would use for a website, right? So you have maybe a portfolio site, you would have something about yourself, a little gallery of your work, and maybe a contact button or somewhere to get in touch. Well, something like super.so allows you to take that information and then ship it over to the internet and create a real site just using the notion. Now, this is an example here. This is something that they, they obviously have in their gallery. But the cool thing is that you can obviously choose your own fonts. And if you notice, it does have a very similar layout to what Notion would be. Another example here is gonna be michaeldean.site. And we can see that this is basically a Notion site, right? This tells it away, but again, you don't need to learn a design software. You don't need to do any of that. This is a no code way to publish a site now, although this will have its limitations, obviously. But if you need to go from zero to website without any friction, as they say here, then this is a great, great example, or this is a great, great tool. Now next up is going to be Glide and also Softer. I'm going to go over both of them because they're quite similar. Now Glide or Software are softwares that allow you to build a website only using Google Sheets, Excel or Airtable. Now software only works with Airtable or Google Sheets, but the idea is that you have data on this Excel sheet or on this Airtable and you can then send it to create a website. And if you imagine what a CMS is, it's essentially a Excel sheet. Now, an example of what you could do with Glide or Softer is some of these examples here. So you could do a company CRM, you could do inventory, you can do a very simple form. There's a few more here. So you can have client portal, you could do internal tools. So if you need to find a person that works there with a really quick database, if you need to make some sort of marketplace, a community, a directory, or even websites, then this is a great use case for, for software or also for Glide. Now, one of the limitations that I'm seeing with these examples here is that the design of these Glide websites are actually quite limiting. So if we see here in the example that they're giving us, I mean, this this is pretty, pretty standard. It's fine, I mean, it works, but it's not 
incredible design that's gonna win any awards. But if you need to get this out as a very quick and dirty way for an internal solution, then Glide or Softer could work very well for you. Then we have ReadyMag. Now ReadyMag is a no-code tool that is built directly for designers. Now the way that ReadyMag looks and feels is like it was made by designers for designers. Now that can be a really great thing. However, if you consider that websites need to be built with a very robust system in the back end just to be able to build a website in the first place, you want to be able to feel confident with the tool that you're using. And sometimes when they're explaining how, how powerful their builder is, like this here, jaw dropping animations, and then they give you this, you know, it's it's, it's almost like you, you're asking, like you want more from from this website. And personally, I don't feel like it's really it's really there yet. Like we can see here with this uh, typography example, that's their tool to change the, the font size and weight and slant all of this, but it just doesn't feel that professional yet. It doesn't feel that, that fantastic. If we see the actual examples and the showcase that they use, we can see what kind of websites that people usually make with ReadyMag. It's a very portfolio driven software that is tailored towards designers, artists, agencies, even and we can see exactly what they look like now i don't think that you should use this just because it's it's great for portfolios if you want to create your portfolio you could use wordpress you can use shopify you can use webflow wix whatever you want it doesn't necessarily need to be this but this is a great tool if you want a site that can that can get you something something simple that that looks good but it won't be an award-winning site in, in my opinion but it might be who knows now next up we have three of the most common and most popular website builders and no code builders that i am aware of now the first one here we're going to talk about is going to be editor x now editor x first came out of wix now wix is long known as not the best website builder out there but it's a very popular but it's not necessarily used by the hardcore website building professionals. And this is their solution to that. They created Editor X to essentially compete with Webflow. Now, it has its own CMS, as we can see. It has a very powerful custom code. But from what I've seen from reviews and, and other colleagues that actually use this, is that it's not really there yet. Now, this might just be because it's it's still relatively early in development, and what they're trying to do is essentially catch up to Webflow and everything that, that they already have. But from what I've heard, it's quite glitchy. It doesn't work super well, and I'm just trying to be honest as possible so, they, so that if you do want to use it, and if you do think that this is a better solution for you, that you're aware of it. Now, one benefit of Editor X, I need to, I need to give them some benefits as well, is that they do seem like they're there with all of the usual type of solutions that they would give you, like the CMS, the design, the SEO, everything is sort of already given to you right out of the box, as it would be with their main competitors. So that is definitely a good thing. Next up is gonna be Bubble. Now Bubble is seen as the best no-code builder in the game, just because they have their own logic. And what that means is they have their own automation within the actual software. So as you can see here, there's a, there's a quick example that says, when someone signs up, then send them an email, which will then allow them to register for the product or whatever whatever the idea is there right but one of the issues that I see with bubble and for my personal use is that the design of bubble itself and the the actual experience in creating a website and designing a website is quite shabby if I need to say so honestly this is their dashboard that they use to to I guess promote it and this is the very first thing that, that you see or the second thing and it's not the best looking so piece of software in the world and it doesn't necessarily need to be, right? It's it's a piece of software that's allowing you to design something else. And what should speak for the, the actual work is the work that you produce, not really the dashboard that you're designing on. However, I do think that it should also help you navigate the software and be able to create a good looking design without actually confusing you, without essentially causing you any trouble in the process, right? It should help you, not necessarily hold you down. Another issue that I find is that Bubble essentially works as a vector organizer and you can see here with their example the the personal box actually had some points where you can move it and change the size now this is a part of software that they are very proud about they say you can design a site just like you would in illustrator or you would in sketch or figma or whatever it is but personally when you're actually building a website you want more control than that rather than just okay i want to move it 24 pixels down and left and this and that you want to be able to actually use a solid piece of kit when you're designing a site and you don't want to essentially rely on this this tiny moving these these little pixels left and right. But one of the benefits with them is the actual logic that they have. They have a backend that you can use and you can create something like a web app. Now this is one of the benefits of Bubble that you can use their logic and their backend to create 
quite complex products and decent products that, that require signups and integrations. And that's one of the benefits of using Bubble. But personally, the design part of it is quite lacking for me. Now, next up is obviously going to be the pride and joy of my work. It's going to be Webflow. Now, Webflow, I've talked about uncountable amount of times on this channel, but Webflow is essentially for me the best piece of kit that you can use to build a no code site. And this is the dashboard that I'm always talking about that I've talked about in the video. It's a dashboard that allows you to create good websites. And it's complex enough that it's it's not that it's difficult to learn because it's not. You can learn it in a relatively short amount of time, especially if you watch my videos. But it's also simple enough. It's it's a good dashboard that you won't get lost. It won't confuse you as you're trying to build something. And even if you are an expert with it, you can always learn more. There's always more things to learn. They're, they're always releasing new products. Now I've been giving pros and cons about all the tools here. I'm going to do the same with Webflow, obviously. The logic and membership situations came or are coming quite late to the game compared to everything else that we've seen here. A lot of these do have logic already out of the gate when you're when you're working with them. So this is something that I want to see come to Webflow quicker than not. I want to be able to use their logic. I want to be able to create web apps right out of the gate without any integrations, without needing to, to have something extra. And it's not really there yet. So we'll see whenever they do release it. But until then, I still prefer using Webflow over any of these. And keep in mind that all these have their own different preferences. They have their own potential use cases. But for me, Webflow is what I would use to do anything, really. Now, if you're still watching till the very, very end, I do want to say thank you for watching and for taking the time. If you do want to let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see next, then leave them down in the description and also like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.